Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about something very important. How to learn words every day and not forget them. This is a very common problem. It is learning new vocabulary and how to use the vocabulary in a sentence only to forget about the vocabulary after two or three days. So how can I memorize new words and not forget them after a week or two. Let's see together. So first of all, learn the things around you. What does that mean? Let's imagine that you are in your room. In your room, there is a TV. Okay, what does the TV do exactly? What can you watch on the TV? What kind of programs can you watch? So. When you learn how to explain simple things using your everyday English, you are improving your English and you are learning new words. Use your visual memory to learn new words. So when you are in the room, you should be able to look around and be able to say the names of all the items in the room and describe them and how do we use them, where did you buy them, why did you buy them, and so on. It is the ability to express those simple daily things in English. Explain new words for yourself. Let's say, for example, that you have a gift. So, who gave you this gift? Why did they give you this gift? Maybe you have a gift from your wife. Maybe your wife or your husband gave you this gift on the memory of the day you got married. So what do we call this day? What do we call the memory of the day we got married? We call it anniversary. So this is how you learn new words. You try to express yourself uh, and explain the things around you in every single day. Find synonyms and opposites to these new words. This is very important. You should at least try to learn one synonym for every word you know. Let's say that it's something simple, like for example, a table. So wait a minute, there is no synonym for table. Yes, maybe, but there are different kinds of table. For example, a meeting table or a dining table. Okay, what about a desk? Can you describe the table? What is the table made of? And so on. Now use the words in sentences. For example, we have a table. Usually, who sits around the table? How do you clean the table? How do you maintain the table? And so on. Connect these words to new words to form a words chain. So what does that mean exactly, words chain? Okay, now let's see the video and then we will explain this together. So this is a closet in my kitchen. We usually use it to keep foods. I usually uh, record in the kitchen. So let's see, what do we have here? So this is pasta, spaghetti, and voila, surprise, surprise, English. So it's not only that there is English here, it's actually with Turkish and Arabic translation. So this is perfect. So let's use this example to learn some new words together. I'll take a screenshot and we will learn at least three new words today using this. Good. Now, let's look at the picture here. Like we said, we have the English instructions in the middle and then we have the Turkish translation and the Arabic translation. This is very useful if you want to learn specific words or 
if you want to see how the translation should be. Like, for example, look here. Serves for. Serves for in English. And then in Turkish, I have the number four also. So now I am 100% sure that this word, kishilik, it means serves. Serves for. Of course, we are talking about people. So it serves for people. This is just an example. Now let's look here in the instructions. First, boil three, three liters of water and add one tablespoonful of salt into it. And then we have the full stop. So I know here that we have the full stop here, that this is the translation of the first sentence. And the same in Arabic, I have the small comma here. So this is the first sentence, this is the first sentence, and this is the first sentence. All of them translated uh, into three different languages. Okay, now let's use the word boil to see what it means, and are there any other different ways to use it in English? So the example we have today is boil. So if you don't know what boil means, just copy it, go to Google, and put it here. Boil meaning. And Google will give you the meaning of the word, and he will give you how to use it in a sentence. So reach or cause to reach the temperature at which it bubbles and turns to vapor. Look here, those are the bubbles and it turning into gas. Uh, and now we are talking about pasta, so this is cooking. Cook or to be cooked by immersing in boiling water or stock. Immersing. So you take what you want to cook and you put it inside the water, so it's immersed by the water as the water boils. Now, are there any other different ways I can use the word boil? Yes, of course. For example, make my blood boil. It means to get extremely angry. Let's use it in a sentence. Uh, losing a football match makes my blood boil makes me extremely angry. It's boiling hot. We are talking about the weather. It means it's very hot. So usually in Turkey, it's boiling hot in August. Now, if you remember, we have salt in the same sentence. When we talked about here, Boil th three liters of water and add one tablespoonful of salt. Now, we all know what salt is, but can we use salt in different expressions? Yes, we can. To add salt to injury. To add salt to injury. Imagine that you are injured or somebody cut you, and then he takes salt and he puts it on your injury or on your cut. So sometimes we say to add salt to injury. Sometimes we say to rub salt. Like he takes the salt and he puts it and rub the injury or the cut with it. To do or say something that makes a bad situation even worse for someone. Now imagine, God forbid, that you are in a car accident. So, and you got injured and the car wasn't insured. So you are already in a bad situation where you had an accident and you were injured, but also the car wasn't insured. So I got in a car accident and to add salt to injury, the car wasn't insured. To be salty, to be annoyed or upset, especially when this is unreasonable. For example, I always get salty when somebody eats my chocolate. Okay, wait a minute. This is something silly. Just go and buy another chocolate. No, I'm salty now. I am annoyed or upset. Now, we have talked about 
word chains. So what does that mean, actually, a word chain? So this is how to form a word chain. You take the words and you connect them together to remember them. Now let's check this word chain together. So we started in the kitchen. And in the kitchen, there was a closet. In the closet, we checked the pasta. And there were the cooking instructions where you should boil the pasta and add salt to it. So this is a word chain. All these words are connected together. If you remember only one of them, you will be able to remember the other things using your visual memory. So we started in the kitchen. In the kitchen, there's a closet. And in the closet, we found pasta and we boiled the pasta and added salt to it. Now, we will try to do this every day so we can learn words and not forget them. Thank you for your time and good luck.